we're going to get started just so that you know you are being recorded so you know if you do anything wacky on screen it will be saved for posterity and we will use it to embarrass you at some point but welcome everyone to virtual boozy brunch this is season two episode 29 and we decided to theme this one skull trevor am i saying that correctly i've never been to iceland so i don't know how my accent but uh, thank you. Give it all a try. This is all about welcome and cheers and having a really lovely Sunday. And we still have people coming in, so I'll continue to expect you from the welcome room. And we just want to share that we love to make this as interactive as possible. So Mark is going to choose three people right now and spotlight you. I always sign my email. Here's comma Belinda, and we're curious to hear how you sign your emails because we have a world etiquette expert here, and she's going to teach us fun things about doing things right. So I would love to hear from a couple of people in the audience how they sign their emails. How about you, Jeff? How do you sign your emails? Oh, all the best. <laughs> all the best. <laughs> Be safe and sane. And Marchi, your third email signature method is thanks, exclamation point, and Mark's smiley face. Oh, that's a good one. Does anyone else have an interesting? Libby, do you do anything interesting with your email signatures? Oh. Yeah, I do all the best as well. That's a good one. Well, hopefully Heidi is nodding at all of us that these are appropriate <laughs> email signatures. But I feel like it's all about, you know, ending on a bright and positive which is definitely what we're always trying to do here. I just want to let everyone know if you haven't looked at the recipes and you're not going to cook along or make the cocktails along with us today, you can always find the recipes on my website at belindachang.com slash virtual boozy brunch. And we also want to share that we have a really great co-host this week, Carrie Levins, who is a triple threat in so many ways. She's also been here as a guest three times cooking for us. She is also a wine director, sommelier extraordinaire and runs restaurants and does all kinds of really brilliant things and she is my co-host today and she is going to share right now how we like to virtual boozy brunch once we get her unmuted hello everyone and welcome uh it is so nice to see so many familiar faces and some new faces as well um and just a few tips and tricks to help you enjoy this time together um, as much as possible there are a few different things you can do to control your screen and also engage with our amazing guests and myself and Belinda and Mark and um, just have a great time together. So in the right uh, corner of your screen there, you can toggle between a gallery view and the speaker view if you want to see the speaker a little bit more up close. Um, but if you want to see other people's amazing cocktail creations or what they're cooking, you can also go to that gallery view and get a good perspective there. Um, I know I like- Carrie, we should stop for a minute just so everyone knows. Yeah. Even if you see just a spotlight on camera, everyone is watching you. We all love to peep good real estate and to see your beautiful kitchens and homes. So you are always being watched, just FYI. Yes. Very good note. And uh, in addition, we also have the chat box, which is a great way to communicate with each other, ask questions, share your positive news and stories and uh, all the great things that are going on. I know we need to focus, I know I need to focus as much on the positive points in life as much as possible. Another reason why I love connecting with everyone um, through virtual boozy brunch. So last week we celebrated all the ways that we can get wild. And I will tell you that that barbecue sauce that Chef Dominique from Lexington Betty makes is unbelievable. I've had it twice since we had this episode and cooked with her. We also did some woo woo, wild woo woo. And I saged my entire studio thanks to Jen Weigel's great advice. And then Anthony from Fistful of Bourbon, which is now my new favorite brown spirit uh, was here and not not to compete with you know the vodka we're gonna be having today brown spirit so it was really fun to get a little wild on a sunday and this week as i said we're celebrating skull and cheers and all the wonderful things that go along with hanging out with leonardo dicaprio 
<laughs> and we have some great guests. So if you're going to be shaking cocktails along, you're going to get your ice in just a minute. And we've got two cocktails, an espresso martini and a cosmopolitan that Trevor's going to take us through. And then if you're cooking along, you might have already started grating your tomatoes, which I've never done before, to make Jeff Wilgopolin's infamous tomato sauce, simple tomato sauce, which is kind of fun because we've done some real culinary acrobatics on this brunch show before. And this one, I feel like we can relax just a bit, although we definitely want to make Jeff proud. And then in the third segment, we're going to visit with Heidi, who's a world-renowned etiquette expert and get some tips and tricks for Zoom etiquette. And also something that's been very hard for me, particularly during the pandemic, and maybe this will help you too, how to say no. So with all of that, I think we're going to have a little song and dance as I go to get my ice. Okay. We're just playing around. I mean, I feel like really there's a little music. Brunch always has music, right? So I'm gonna pass it off to Carrie to introduce our first very talented guest, Carrie. So we have Trevor from Rekia Vodka, which um, is from Iceland. Uh, and because we're celebrating all things skull, which I believe is how Belinda signs her emails. It cheers, right, to good yes. health, cheers, skull. Um, and we're going to be making two very classic cocktails today because it is National Vodka Day. Actually, I think it's been National Vodka Year um, in 2020, but let's celebrate National Vodka Day together. Um, so Trevor, reading a little bit about you, I learned that you're a little bit of a cocktail ninja. I want to know all about that. And uh, also an urban gardener, which I am myself. So um, I want to hear about what you grow and the type of... Uh, the syrups you make to create your own twist on this Reykjavik vodka. Awesome. Yeah, well, first, let me just thank you guys for having me. And uh, I'd like to wish everyone a happy International Vodka Day, obviously, on behalf of Reykjavik Vodka. Uh, like you guys had mentioned, it's one of the only Icelandic vodkas that we have here in the US. And it is a beautiful product for a slew of cocktails, which we will go through a couple now. But first, Let's talk about my man bun really quickly and how I got dubbed the cocktail ninja. So yeah. the reality is, is the year was the early 2000s. And essentially there was a movie that came out with Tom Cruise, but let's not forget in 1988, uh, Tom Cruise was in a movie called The Cocktail and he was a bartender extraordinaire. Well, cut back to, or I should say fast forward to the early 2000s. Uh, there was a movie called The Last Samurai that had come out that he fe was featured in and was the lead in. And uh, I was bartending at a rooftop bar in New York at the time, and I had some bartender skills. I had a specific um, a suave about me, I guess. And <laughs> I was essentially a struggling actor, and my I couldn't afford to get my hair cut, and my hair was growing out. And because I worked in hospitality, I had to tie my hair back for sanitary reasons. In restaurants, men started ordering the Cosmo, and they were like, I don't care, it's pink, it's delicious. I'm just gonna have myself a Cosmo. <laughs> I am one of those men, 100%, and I always ask permission and say, is it okay if I give you the spec for the cocktail? Because I don't want Rose's Lime in it, and I don't really want it to be sweet. I want it to be tart and refreshing, and I can put down more than I will publicly admit on camera. Yes, so I'm not yes. drinking coffee this morning, so okay. let's Perfect jump over to an espresso martini because I can keep I'm ready. Right. Oh, ready. <laughs> Belinda yes. is on it today. Okay. Do so it. uh as you guys very well know there's a bunch of cocktails that have been trending a bunch with coffee. This is different than the dessert or again sugar bomb I'll make a reference to. This is a cocktail that you can have before dinner, with dinner or after dinner. You can rip your little uh, espresso in your machine at home. But we're gonna start with two ounces of this exceptionally smooth, beautiful Icelandic vodka. And I like then, any two ounces of booze, yes. Yes, two, two ounces, a good serve. Then we're gonna move on to a fresh pull of uh, fresh espresso, and that's one ounce. Now that's gonna give us all of that flavor versus putting in, say, a coffee liqueur that's gonna add some sugar to it and is gonna weigh down the cocktail 
and maybe not uh, uh, allow you to enjoy it as much. And then lastly, we're gonna finish it off with just one-to-one -one simple syrup here. So just sugar and water, uh, equal parts. And again, this is another, this is the part where you could, if you liked it sweeter, you could put in three quarters of an ounce. If you liked it even more dry, you could put in um, a quarter of a, uh, yeah, even, or none. But we're gonna ice our tin up. And now this is a drink that I started my obsession with at a small bar called Employees Only in New York. Yeah. It was about 15, about 15 years ago that I had one of these. Belinda, it's go time. Are you ready, ready. to shake? So let's do it. Some so shaking got, Trevor, everyone says I have the dorkiest shake. I don't know how to make it look <laughs> but. Oh my God, Mark G has got some gorgeous broth on his martini. Look at that. Now, oh. I'm so glad that you brought that up and that's that an excellent crema? segue. So what you got here is the nitrogen that's in the espresso is the garnish. And that oh. head that you're gonna get there that ombre, if you watch, and again, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll bring it closer to the camera. Yeah, Jessica's got it going on too here with her martini. That looks amazing. What you will see is as the time happens, it will start to settle. It's already happening. I don't know if you guys are capturing that. Yeah, it almost looks like a but Guinness. It, yes, so very cool. much like a Guinness, very, very much like a stout. And that's because of the nitrogen in the espresso. You can make this with a cold brew, but it's definitely gonna be a different drink. The consistency is gonna be different. The flavor will be the same, but it won't be the same cocktail adventure that we're having here today. And two, one half, simply put, very easy. It is delicious. It is not that many calories and it provides that coffee kick that I know you guys are looking for, especially maybe on a Sunday, hair of the dog. Thank you, so, Wow, fantastic. Say it again, skull oh. Belinda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wait, this so good. Trevor, I've never had one with espresso before because I've never seen one that had this sort of foam and this texture. Incredible. Sure. Uh. It's, it's one thing that I think in a lot of ways, right? And, and not to knock the, the old dessert style way because there's nothing wrong with that or using a coffee liqueur. It's just a different drink. And you can really vary the sweetness here. And it's a sophisticated way to drink a caffeinated beverage and get you on whatever adventure you are on, day, night, everything in between. This is getting me into exactly the state of mind I need to be in. And probably like a lot of people, I sometimes forget about vodka. I mean, I didn't forget about it when I was in college, but these days <laughs> I sometimes forget about it. So thank you for this You're great- You're very work. welcome. So fun. Well, I'm sure there's a million questions and we'd love to have you hang out a little later um, as we get through getting something into our stomachs to follow the vodka. <laughs> sure. But Carrie, if I can take it over from here, now that we've got something great to drink and I'm feeling a little flushed coming on, <laughs> I'm so thrilled and honored to introduce my good friend of many years, Jeff Wilgopolin, Wigs for short, if he allows you. You have to ask permission, I think, for that <laughs> moniker. But he's joining us from his kitchen, his beautiful kitchen in Houston. He's the vice president at Forbes Travel Guide by Trade. But like Carrie, multi-talented and able to do a lot of things so brilliantly. It's remarkable. Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know we have many steps to this sauce and we're going to get it all into the pots and simmering and then toss it to Heidi and then come back to you to finish the dish. Sound good? Sounds good. We've got a little two-parter. Um, so thanks, Belinda, of course, for the invitation. Um, it's a great way to start off a, a Sunday for sure. And speaking of starting off right, I do have to admit I'm double fisting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, although I do have to say, I think that the, uh, I think I may have gone overboard on the vodka here. Uh, <laughs> has like, the faintest hint of cranberry. Um, and along with that, drinking my favorite, favorite Sauvignon Blanc from Cade in Napa Valley. Um, you know, I'm sure that everyone is aware of just the devastation that has taken place there this week. And if you feel so inclined to donate to the Red Cross or an organization like World Central Kitchen, which is Chef Jose Andreas's amazing organization that has made thousands of meals for those affected by wildfires and 
so many other things. But and also another way, what we can all do is just buy Napa Valley wine. Um, yes, they need our support now, but they'll need our support in three months, six months, nine months from now. So um, if you're at the wine store, the grocery store, pick up a bottle and uh, support obviously an area that, 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 that we love so much. Um, you know, and I travel a whole lot for work, well, I guess pre-pandemic and starting to pick up and when you fly a couple hundred thousand miles a year, when you come back home after staying in hotels and restaurants, really something all you want is just something easy and fresh, and super flavorful. So excited to share um, a pasta sauce for you. And we're gonna go through just the base of it today and whatever you need to change it up, amend it, it's totally flexible. And that's sort of the fun part of it. As you can see, there's not many ingredients in it, but first things first, if we've got our diced tomatoes, I'm just going to dump those into a medium-sized pot. Diced onions. And onions, onions, sorry. Yes, and diced onions. And then put in about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. If you think that like that's a lot, um, you'd be right. Um, usually we only are a couple tablespoons of sauteing, but the olive oil is really going to work with the sauce and give it like the richness and the viscosity it needs and then a little pinch of salt. And what that salt is going to do is actually bring out a little bit of the moisture in the onions while they're cooking, so that way we don't have to babysit them so much. So we'll put this on, and then we won't step on the top while we do it. And how, Jeff, how high, is, how high is your heat for that? It's about a medium high. Okay. Um, and then bring this over, and then while that's cooking, don't put in the garlic. Um, garlic only needs a minute or so to, to cook, so just heavy onions on. And you can also start your water for your pasta, because they're going to cook about the same. So we have a big bowl, a big pot of boiling water there. And one thing about pasta water is make sure you don't put in the salt until the water is boiling. If you put the salt in too soon, it goes down to the bottom and it kind of corrodes your pot. You might see like the little circles down at the bottom. So just make sure that when you put salt in, it's always in boiling water. Jeff, I guess I never knew like you should wait on the garlic. Is that why I always burn it? You should wait to Yeah, that is why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, onions will take about like six minutes to cook. Garlic will take about one minute. So, um, and you don't want burnt garlic in your sauce. You want everything to be super fresh. So then with regards to the tomatoes, we're gonna to take our tomato and cut it in half widthwise. So that way you have the core on one side and obviously like the bottom on the other. And then in a really suave kitchen move that I learned many years ago when I was working at the Four Seasons Hotel in Philadelphia, is to take the large side of a box grater and then take your tomato and obviously in a large bowl and just run it down the tomato or run it down the grater. I, I you don't to need to press it really hard. Um, as, let the box a, do all the work. As an Italian American girl from Jersey, this uh, technique was revelatory. I've been <laughs> tomato sauce my whole life. I have my grandma's recipe, but I, this is pretty cool because essentially you're getting that pure pulp, no skin, and it's so fast. It's super it's fast. It's better and than a can of puree. It's so cool. Right. It's super fast, and what's also nice is that the skin won't go through the grater. So you're going to get like this little disc of skin, which you can just put off to the side. If um, you feel so inclined, like I always keep a little bag, a plastic bag of like onion scraps and celery and carrots, and you can put the tomato skins in, put it in the freezer, and then when the bag gets too full, then just throw it in a pot, add some water, make some vegetable stock. I love that day. That's my favorite day. I do stocks <laughs> on Saturdays and it's like, turn on some really loud music and drink some vodka. Right. <laughs> make vegetable stock. All right, what is making is a little stir. And then, and then I hope that everyone is on their way to tomato grated madness. It's and really good cardio. Grating the tomatoes is good cardio, Jeff. It's a good arm workout, right? Yeah, I got a little sweaty doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then once you, once we have this, um, while the onions are still sauteing, I thought that we would also talk about pasta. 
So I like to use spaghettini in this, but if you use spaghetti, that's totally fine. Um, spaghettini is like a cross between spaghetti and capellini. So it's almost like right in the middle. So it's not as thin as an angel hair. But yes, that's it. Um, and my two favorite brands are either Garofalo or Del Verde. Um, the, it's sort of like a rough surface on the pasta, which like holds the sauce in better. Um, and uh, although it seems like it's really fancy, it's like a dollar more. Um, and so it's just really, really good pasta. Um, we can get it at a, at a regular store here in Houston, but if not, obviously you can just order it online. Um, they usually come in packs of four. And uh, um, once you get like this awesome Italian dried pasta, it's hard not to keep eating it for sure. Yeah. All right. So oh, Jeff Hope had a little tip from Mike. You can also use a ricer instead of the box grater. A ricer, mm. for sure, right? <laughs> Throw them in there, all right? All right. So with regards to now we've got our onion sauteing, we can add in our garlic. And once we add in the garlic, you really only, like, I only really like to cook garlic until you can smell it. So once you start to smell that strong garlic, aroma coming out of the pot, it's time to add in something else. Um, especially if you're going to continue to keep cooking stuff. Right. So then we'll saute the onions and garlic a little bit. Once again, once you start to smell those onions, or smell the garlic, now we can add in some dried oregano. And I've messed with this recipe a bunch, and I prefer oregano over dried basil. So we're just going to put in a good heaping tablespoon. And if it seems like a lot, once again, it is. But once you're kind of want to saute that, and once you smell the garlic, then or smell the oregano, then we'll add in a little bit of crushed red chili pepper, or crushed red chili pepper. If you don't like things spicy, you can add a little more in. If you want to make it a little spicy, or you want to make it spicier, you can um, add more. If you want to obviously edit it out, you can. But it's good to put in just a little bit, so that way it gets a little heat to it. And then saute it for a little bit. Once again, once you start to smell all of it, now we just add in our tomatoes. Hey Jeff, have you heard pasta sauce as a uh, like a, as a base for like a vodka sauce, since today's theme is vodka. I'm sorry? Could we add vodka to this sauce since we have it handy? Do you want to know what? You can add some vodka into it, for sure. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Would you add that now or later? I think you would add it before you add in the tomatoes. Okay. Like add a little vodka into it, wait until that cooks off just a little bit and then add in your tomatoes. And then once all that's added in, we'll add in our pepper, just a very small kind of like half teaspoon of sugar, and then about a teaspoon of salt. Give it a nice little stir. And then I love this it. Is you the for the screen with, with hope right now. It looks like a proper TV show. Your cooking show. <laughs> right? I've got a, a great cameraman with some excellent skills. Yeah, um, CJ. CJ. <laughs> so what that sauce needs for about 10 minutes or so to cook just to get a little bit of that tomato water evaporated. But for the most part, you've got sauce. That's it. There's really nothing else other than to uh, cook the pasta. And then Wait, to, I missed it. Did we, dump, did we dump in the tomato? So after the vodka, you can dump in the tomato. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll add in the tomato and then the salt, the pepper, and the sugar. And now we just let that cook for about 10, 12 minutes or so. All right. So we're letting that simmer. I'll try not to burn anything this episode. Jeff, we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Carrie. What's next? Next is an amazing woman, Heidi Gilbon, who is an etiquette expert. And although she spent the first part of her career as a trailblazing woman, breaking a lot of rules, breaking the glass ceiling um, as one of the first female grain traders of Conagra, 
Uh, she is now dedicating herself to helping us all navigate the new normal um, of our society right now um, in terms of teaching us a little bit of etiquette, um, especially Zoom etiquette um, and acts of kindness, which I think is more important than ever. And I see Heidi, you are in front of this gorgeous table. Um, and so we just want to run through um, some Zoom etiquette, which I think is something that is new to all of us. And, um, you know, we all need to learn in this new virtual age. Um, suggestions on ways to say no um, when there's a lot of people that are in need or asking um, and how to kind of protect our own boundaries and give maybe just what we have. And, um, and maybe you have a few suggestions, call to action um, to spread some acts of kindness. Sounds great. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I barely slept last night. I was so excited. We made the uh, beautiful tomato sauce, tried out the vodka, so I'm so excited. Thank you. Um, so should we tackle Zoom first? Great. Zoom first. So um, Zoom, okay. Uh, I highly recommend, I do a whole webinar on, on Zoom etiquette. Can you believe it? Uh, and I, I think you should have a charter that you should set up um, early and then you can follow the charter and everybody knows the rules and the expectations. Um, just a couple of uh, hacks, uh, make sure that your camera angle is good. Uh, how many of us have been at meetings and we're looking up the guy's nostril or we're looking <laughs> Head and you know that's a pretty simple fix but something people forget about um, make sure you can the, your mic works can people hear you um, and something that I think is just amazing you know and be on time uh, that's just being courteous please just be on time and um, Showing up, okay, this is casual, we're all home. I got kind of dressed up today just because I set the table, you know, so I thought, well, I'll look the part. Um, but um, you don't have to get that dressed up. I like this term, uh, at-home professional. So when you're attending meetings, you're doing things, just look at-home professional. Just look like you put forth a little effort, that you have enough pride for yourself, your organization, you know, just look the part a bit. Um, Heidi, I've also heard of something called the professional mullet, where you're professional up top where the camera is, but then maybe sweatpants underneath. Or no pants. No. Or no. none. Yeah, you know, uh, why not if you're watching your camera angle? However, there have been sort of notorious mishaps around the world. You know, there are 300 million Zoom, uh, people meet on Zoom every day. There's bound to be some mishaps and some pretty famous people, you know, Christopher Reeve, remember him? You know, um, his son is a reporter and he was caught, um, look great top up, but down, you know. So. <laughs> He really recovered. He was a live segment. The next day he came back on the network and did a Zoom etiquette, sort of tongue in cheek. So, you know, have a little fun with it, but really be respectful. If you're, if you're going to just go, go with the mullet, make sure your camera angle is okay. And so, some, you know, there are many things we could talk about, but um, I think this one to wrap this up is really important is um, as I think etiquette is, you know, etiquette is, um, you know, we can set a table and talk about which fork and all of this stuff. And if you want to do that, we can do that all day long. But to me, etiquette, um, it boils down the core is about respect and being empathetic. And everything I do is about etiquette, empathy, and empowerment. So that's what, especially through this global pandemic, you know, what really matters, our priorities, we're, we're reprioritizing what's really important, probably not which fork, but we can have respect. So when you're on a Zoom meeting, be respectful. You know, it, when people are presenting to you on Zoom, just as you would pay attention and be engaged and be all in, uh, in real life, please do the same when it's virtual. It's the same thing. They can see you whether you realize that or not. 
And it's kind of disrespectful if you're there, oh gosh, let me text, this is so boring, I think I'm gonna you know, get onto something else. Um, and that's not, that's not good. Give it your full attention. Um, I, so I love that you just said that because I've definitely been on some big Zooms where there's presenters, they're very nervous and I feel so badly because especially for our brunch, we ask all of our talent and presenters to watch the gallery view all the time, right? So they can sort of see if they're connecting and people are understanding their message or if they're caught up on making the drink. So it's a real bummer as a presenter. I know you know because you do this quite a lot and also for a living when you look up to see the whole gallery and everyone's on their phone. <laughs> That's no fun. Be respectful, everybody. That, that's, that's my best advice to you for Zoom. So we would love a little bit more of your advice as well, actually, in um, the, the art and the etiquette of, of saying no um, in a respectful, considerate way where people's feelings aren't hurt. Um, so what can you teach us about that? Yeah, isn't this something we all struggle with? I know I struggle with it all the time. And um, so uh, why is it so hard to say no and it's so easy to say yes? Well, just a little foundational information. The science says we say yes for three main reasons. Pleasing people, we, want to, um, we don't want to let anyone down. Uh, number two, we don't want to appear weak. Of course we can do that. And the third one is we just want to get out of here. If I say yes, I can get the heck out of this situation, you know? So, okay, so what do we do? Well, what we need to do is have a strategy and have a plan. So when we are asked for these things, we're ready. So a good thing to do is stop. Before you immediately, if you're like me, I tend to want to please and want to just say yes, 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 stop. Just tr train yourself, practice uh, is, will help. Train yourself to stop, think about it. And with respect, think, okay, so what are they really asking? You know, and, and then you ask yourself, okay, can I do this? Do I have the talent, the expertise? Maybe this is completely out of my wheelhouse. Okay, can I do it? Should I do it? Is this appropriate for me to do? Does this uh, align with my values? Uh, and thir third one is time. Do I have time to do this? Well, be this is tricky right now because in the middle of a global pandemic to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that. My plate is full. Guess what? Everybody else's plate is full too. So that one's a little tricky. Maybe save that for better days. Uh, and then something else comes in there is power dynamics. Who's asking? You know, who is asking? Maybe it's your boss asking and then it's probably a yes. So, you know, all of these things you have to take into consideration. And then um, especially when people are asked, especially now and all the causes are so wonderful, can't you please, produce this event, a uh, virtual event for me. Can't you please um, create and present a webinar for me, a talk? I, you know our organization doesn't have enough money right now. Surely you can do this for us for free, right? Well, okay, so here's how I think we look at this. Okay, establish a budget, if you will. Okay, you have to, to think, okay, what know your worth? your status to get where you are think of what it took to get where you are that has great value so you decide okay well the are great causes and personally my personal philosophy is i love to give back i want to help people but you have to have some kind of a budget how many of these can i do in x amount of time so say maybe let's just say it's two, two webinars per year something so have like a little mental box that you fill you know there's a whole bunch of no's in this box but maybe my box has two yeses so it's it, that I have a budget for this. So, so when someone says, oh, wouldn't you please love to address, be the keynote, your name would draw so many people to this event, please, can you do this for us? You know we can't pay you, but... And so instead of saying yes, uh, no, stop, think, be respectful, go through these questions, and then you can say, this is how we do it. It's almost a formula. Um, start with a positive comment. 
and then thank the person for asking you and then boom, uh, lower the boom and give your reason why. Thank them again and then leave them with something, um, a, a mignon d's, if you will, a little something sweet at the end. So we could say um, perhaps, um, well, thank you for asking me. You know how much I really value all the work you're doing. It's impressive how many young people you're helping. If you know something specific, throw it in. I really love that you're um, exposing the culinary arts to all these at-risk teens. However, at this time, I am already hit my budget for what I can do gratis this year. If that's too uncomfortable for you, you can just simply say, I would love to help, but at this time, this is just not a good fit for me. And then you go on, and it, with engagement, I'm sure you understand because like me, I'm sure you're not able to do all the things you would like to do as well. Mm -hmm. Then wow. let's close with, again, thank you for asking. And then if you want the little mignardis, okay. Um, you know I support you, I'm with you in spirit. And these will help get you out of that. So stop and think. That's, and be respectful. You're uh, politely declining. You're being empathetic. And I hope now you're empowered with some tools. Keep a strategy. So when people ask, you open up that little box and, oh, geez, I'm down to one yes. And be picky with this yes, because you don't, if you say yes to something you really don't want to do, and all you're thinking about is, oh, my God, why did I agree to that? How the heck am I going to get out of it? then you've wasted all this energy. So uh, be picky with those yeses. Those are amazing suggestions, especially taking a little bit of time. I personally am a people pleaser and I like to just say yes and run myself ragged and try to do a million things for everyone. And then I don't end up doing the best job that I wanna do. So when I give myself a minute to think about it and I can make a really good, uh, I could give it some consideration and make a good uh, judgment, it's everybody else is, is happy. It's a win-win in that instance. Mary, I agree. Heidi, you're also, a lot of the people in the audience here today are in food and beverage. And so we're a traditional first stop for a donation, for a request for an appearance. And right now it's particularly hard and I'm getting even more inquiries than before. So I love what you said. I'm going to make it into a t-shirt. Leave them with a Mignardis. <laughs> That's an amazing strategy. <laughs> I love it. And I know that you train like Fortune 500 CEOs and all kinds of people how to communicate elegantly and gracefully. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. Pretty awesome. You can find Heidi at her website. We also put all of her information into the chats and you can find her on the website and the web page as well. And we hope she'll hang out for a bit more. If there are any questions, put them in the chats and we'll give you a chance to ask them of her. Thank you so much. And I don't know about you, but if you're making sauce, your kitchen probably smells pretty great right now. Jeff, I've got like a simmer going on. What do we need to do next? All right. So, well, before we have, well, before we tackle that, those are awesome tips, Heidi. And I love the idea of some language mean your ease. I mean, it's like some swanye in your email, right? Um, Is that going to turn into a new Forbes five-star standard? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think we might write that one in. All right. So for our, our sauce, I'm going to bring it all over so that we can see it a little better. We've got, let's say, our sauce, and then we've got our pasta that's done. Maybe we'll give our, our sauce a little stir here. And a good chunk of that water should have evaporated or has evaporated. If you want to cook it for just a little longer, feel free. You know, and I think that this is where sort of the fun part of it, where the quote unquote like base comes in. You notice that there's no tomato paste, so if you want to add a little bit of that in, you can add in some more like umami flavor to it. Um, this dish is 100% vegan as of now, um, so if you wanted to add in some meatballs or um, make it a little bit more of a substantial meat sauce, like feel free to. Um, but once again, it's like the idea is that it's like, all of the ingredients are really fresh, and then um, for we have our pasta here. 
And I'm a very big believer in that this is like sit, uh, your pasta sitting in a pot of like absolute liquid gold. And I think sometimes we tend to just dump all of this down the drain. And the, that, that should make your pasta cry a little bit. Those are like <laughs> tears that are going through the colander because like, this is the most like, flavorful, it's probably one, one of the most flavorful parts, but also like binds all of the pasta together. So one of my favorite things to do is to, when your pasta is done, just take it and just put it like, directly into your sauce. Oh, nice. Or you can take like a, a pot or a, like a measuring cup and drain some of that out, put it in a colander, drain the rest out. But you always want to have like a little pasta water to add back into your sauce. It makes everything stick a little better. Um, it enhances a whole lot of the flavor, but it's definitely sort of the, uh, the secret for sure of really great pasta. Christy right. looks like she's living the Italian dream over there. <laughs> Glass of wine and her pasta. So yeah, I, also, Carrie, I see Jeff's mom. So is this, mom, is this your recipe? Is he just sort of like teaching us what you taught him? <laughs> she's shaking her head. Yeah. No, nope, right. it's all you. No. And then obviously we just mix it up. And then, um, and you know, obviously we could, we should be tasting it throughout, but then just put it on a plate and, um, and we eat, right? And then we uh, get to eat. Woohoo! Oh. So once again, you want to put some cheese, some Parmesan cheese on it. Obviously you can, um, but yeah. No one here has any problems with Parmesan cheese, I don't no. think. Otherwise <laughs> they're rejected. Right. Um, once again, a super easy, um, like pretty effortless, some good technique involved, but um, like a really good dinner on just like a weekday night that's just like soul filling and um, and once again just like really easy and flavorful. Wow! So, I don't know if this is proper etiquette, but I'm gonna stuff my face. <laughs> yes, absolutely proper. How did everyone's sauce turn out? Mine's. I think I'm gonna boil mine down a little bit. Here's Victoria. Put yours. Let's see. There's oh, one in Chicago. It looks, I love the garnish. Looks beautiful. Very nice. Oh, look at, oh my gosh, Heidi, yours looks incredible. Heidi. Look at that. Woo! Oh. Bravo. Oh, gorgeous. So fun. <laughs> We've got the proper pasta bowl, too. Everyone's got it together, Jeff. Well done, Chef Jeff. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So everyone, this has been such a fun episode. All of our talent today, extraordinary. Thank you so much for sharing your magic. We'd love to hear from you in the chats or live if you'd like to tell us something fun that you learned and that you're grateful for. And we're gonna toss it back to Heidi because she had a really fun call to action for all of us after watching this episode that I'd love for her to share. Heidi. Um, I just think everyone should, yes, I think Jeff um, uh, has a great point with the fires in Napa. Just reach out to someone with an act of kindness today. I mean, it's simple. Uh, I always say, be kind. It's free. It doesn't cost you any money. And it's something we can all do. So make an extra effort to just reach out to someone maybe a stranger, maybe someone you know. You know, someone in Napa, I reached out last night, emailing, making sure they're okay, you know? And as Jeff said, I'm going to, I ordered twice the wine I normally do just because I want to be supportive. And it's just these kinds of things, if that's what you can do, but you can do many acts of kindness that are just absolutely free. Call your neighbor, see how they're doing. Thank you for that. That's really amazing advice. And I will definitely do that today too. And I also just wanted to share, cause there are a lot of people who have been with us on this journey for 30 weeks and people who have been with us for a couple of weeks, Heidi, welcome to everyone who's never been here before. Just so that you know, this particular show is 30 weeks in and it was started to do just that, to help our friends who were furloughed from their food and beverage and small business jobs. And also people who are laid off to give them an opportunity to continue to connect 
connect and continue to share their magic. And we've raised almost $100,000 for various causes uh, at this point and continue to do so. And just so you know, there's a team who works on this every week and we don't really take anything from it other than that we get to hang out with all of these wonderful people. So I hope everyone who's here had a wonderful time and will come back again and share this fun moment that we have every single Sunday. I should also let everyone know, and Heidi, you too, because this will affect next week. We're moving the time back, I guess, a fall back or forward, fall forward. It always confuses me, spring back, fall <laughs> forward. <laughs> but we are going from noon every week Central Time to a start of 1 p.m. Central Time. So West Coast, Caho, you're going to get a little more rest when you join us. Sorry that we've been waking up California so early to start drinking every week, but we're going to move a little forward. We're moving forward. We're falling forward. <laughs> as we get into the colder months. And next week, we have another fantastic group of people coming to join us. We have from Monkey Shoulder, their national ambassador, Anna Maines. We have a friend of both Carrie's and mine, Chef Jansen Chan, who until recently was a pastry instructor at ICC, the culinary school in New York City. And we also have our beloved virtual boozy brunch regular, Jessica. Jessica, would you tell us a little bit bit about what you're going to be sharing with us because you actually started kind of a new business during the pandemic. There you go. Yeah, I'm uh, going to make my hand salve. Um, I would love to do a demonstration on how to make soap, but it's a little more complicated. But this uh, stuff has gotten me through the pandemic and washing my hands so much more. So, um, and it's, uh, I, I've got a custom scent for next week. Yay! So our theme for next week is spice. And a lot of people have asked how we come up with the themes. I'll tell you, up until now, it's been pretty random. <laughs> I just look at what everyone wants to do and we come up with a word that's sort of encapsulated. I know Jeff, when we were putting together this segment, asked if we had any particular theme for this week. And I was like, sure, but we don't know what it is yet. But we have one in advance this time. So we're gonna do spicy cocktail. There are spice aromas in the pumpkin chocolate scones that we're gonna make with Jansen. And then Jessica is doing, what are the aromas and the flavors again, Jess, for the hand salve that we're gonna make? I hand blended a bourbon and a pumpkin scent oil. So it's nice and smoky and spicy. So it'll all work together and we'll try not to eat the delicious hand salve. <laughs> So I think that brings us to just about the end of this episode, unless anybody wants to show off their skills with our virtual TikTok dance. We're editing all that footage together right now. It's to the song Bartender by T-Pain. And we had Christine Snacky, who's a furloughed rockhead, and her husband, Chris Medisevic, put together a really fun dance. I don't know how many counts it was. I don't know that I personally mastered it, but it was definitely a lot of fun. And you will definitely see that dance. Yeah. 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 It went something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'd like to just add something, if I could, to Heidi's. Um, Heidi, you really inspired me to do some kindness as we prepared for this um, show. And so I actually have never done this before, but I paid for the person behind me at In-N-Out last night. <laughs> and they, you know, they ran up to the car and they were so excited. Um, and then I also have a friend that lives in Napa that had to dash away um, to make sure her house and vineyard didn't catch on fire. So I went over to her house and cleaned and, and uh, put an orchid and just tried to do something nice when she got back to her home. So thank you for that inspiration. Very kind, very kind. Thank you, Heidi. Well, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, happy Sunday. We love all of you. We hope you derived a little comfort and got some nice connection today with us. This brings us to the end of episode 29 of Virtual Boozy Brunch. And for those who know, in a few seconds, we're gonna unmute all. And we'd love to have the cacophony of sound that ensues and would love for you to hang out with us for more. And then we're also gonna turn off the recording. So, you know, if you wanna get naked, start swearing, 
sharing um, all of that is now fair game. Do your thing, friends. But skull, everyone. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay, whoever oh. you, you need to stop them now. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this espresso martini. I thought I'm about to make another one. Trevor, that's an incredible recipe. Tipsy. That's what I'm talking about, Mark. <laughs> Fun life, baby. Wait, but Trevor, did you say, did you, so you invented this particular espresso or the mar espresso martini at Employees Only? I did not. I did not. There oh, okay. was a friend of mine from Employees Only. His name is Dev Johnson, who told me he was taught this recipe by a friend of his in California that shall not be named. And this has just been a recipe that I have now kind of shared with everyone for the last five years. I love it. Well, everyone, you're welcome to unmute yourself at any point and join in the discussion for this part of our programming today. But I'm gonna- Does anybody want to sing to me? I like the bartender. <laughs> oh. I like it, the Mark. bartender. Back on. Should I turn this back on? <laughs> uh, Mark, go wild, it's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> good. I, I think like that should be good for the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I like CJ in the background there. Oh, yeah. Print. Oh, <laughs> CJ, come on camera. CJ. Where are you? Yay, CJ. Woohoo! Like one, one, two, three. Oh. Here's our Zusef. Yay! <laughs> oh, such a good girl. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a great Sunday. Bye, Thank Trevor. You, Trevor. Thank you. Bye. Christy, uh, welcome back. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. Did you use uh, tomatoes from your yard? Yes, and I've always been intimidated by about making my own tomato sauce. And now I cannot wait to make it all the time. <laughs> all thanks to Jeff Wimpolin. <laughs> so many grateful for, don't we, Allison? Hell <laughs> yeah. Cheers, woman. This is so fantastic. Oh, good. I'm so glad you came. I was so Because I really needed like a reason to drink on a Sunday. I never do that. <laughs> never. never. I needed a reason to eat carbs. So thank you, Jeff. Oh, you are welcome. This sauce smells so good. I'm letting it go for quite a bit. Like, what's your water level? When do you uh, stop reducing? Um, when I think that you you can't like hold off anymore. Yeah. And then that's it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'm hungry, I want to eat, and then and then it's ready to go. You follow a recipe like I follow a recipe, like, hmm, that's two tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jeff. What I about is you can't mess it up as as much as I've as many times as I've made this, you make it a little different each time. And so even like putting the quantity, I was like, um, I don't know, it's like this much olive oil. It's like <laughs> this much garlic, um, right? Go ahead, Christy, what's your question? I have a question. Um, oh, my screen went away, hold on. We lost you, you can still ask it, we can hear you. Okay, um, do you have a certain type of tomato that you prefer to use for this? To be honest, it works, it's like- It works better? In all honesty, like the cheapy tomato on the vine. Um, like definitely, I don't think you want, I don't think you want to use a plum tomato. You want something that's like, like kind of like a traditional style tomato. Um, if you want to use an heirloom, like, I mean, I'm sure that would be delicious, but I tend to just use like the tomatoes that we just have in the fridge and just use them up. Um, I used heirloom tomatoes and like the smell is really particular and wonderful. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just a little more intense, I think. And mine yeah. were not super ripe yet. Like they were still a little green, but I just mashed them into the grinder. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and now, now I'm feeling like I yeah, need to Yeah, but it's also like a really good way to like use up stuff that you have in the, in the fridge. Yeah. Um, 
Kelsey, now I'm feeling like I need to learn how to can so I can make a bunch of sauce and can it. So yeah, that's, that's my next project. Like if it can be canned. Yeah. Christy, I was telling CJ's parents who are in Atlanta, like my parents have all these cherry tomatoes, but the second they go from green to white, they turn yellow in the end. A bird goes in and pecks them. So we picked them all green and we pickled them. And I think we're going to use them wow. for teeny garnish. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Tomatoes that would be so good. I think it'll be super. Oh, it's dripping. That one's not sealed. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, mom. My mom's here. You didn't steal that. Well. <laughs> <I'll find> that. <laughs> Wait, Mark Hawkins is joining the crew right now. Look who's here. Hooray. He's always on time. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, what's the wine du jour? Are you having a Sauvignon Blanc? No, it's actually a rosé. I thought that would, you know, sunshine oh. in a bottle. <laughs> Very lovely. That's so fun. I see Heidi's got a gorgeous martini going. It just, I loved it. I just saw it with the espresso. It's fantastic. And I love Jeff's pasta. There's a little kick to it. Oh, we just, it's wonderful. I love it. I didn't put the simple syrup in either because I'm trying to do less of that. It's still delicious because it's, then it's like bitter, mm. espresso bitter, and really tasty. So Very it's a good cocktail good. recipe. Very good. <laughs> All simple things. Margaret, did Margaret, you? what are you enjoying? Oh. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Margaret's like, she's having oh. something. I'm enjoying too much of my second drink. She's <laughs> 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 got a scallion pancake. No, no yum. No, just picked up some food for us because we're like emptying out our place right now. They're going on a road trip. So, what is the first stop on your epic? We finally get to rest after opening a restaurant, winning the Best New Restaurant Award, and now we're gonna go for a bit. Yeah, we're just heading west. We are, we've been trying to go on a road trip for the past four years. So first stop is Minneapolis. We're gonna stay there for a night and then get out to Billings, Montana. We're Ooh. Gonna and then um, hit up Yellowstone, do a lot of hiking, see a lot of nature, and then hang out there for for um, a few days and then get up to Seattle. So right now, we're only planned out for like two weeks and then we're just gonna take it from there. So nice. Well, so, so it's, does Supercana still has like some of your recipes? Like there's a couple things on the menu permanent. Did I understand yeah. that correctly? They don't, but they oh. have an amazing menu that they have been tinkering with and um, they have something called Idli. And most people know about dosa, like it's like the thin rice crepe, but it's that same beautiful batter. They make these little pillows of like comfort and joy <laughs> called Idli. <laughs> oh um, I think that, I see Lexington Betty's and then Supercana every other day for my <laughs> takeout for the fall. Yeah. yeah, super comforting. And they're just doing so many wonderful creative things. So, I mean, they don't have our recipes, but they have plenty of their beautiful creative recipes that they're just continuing to evolve. I um, love that. They've been amazing. I'm going to miss them. <laughs> Carrie, were there any epic bottles of Burgundy yesterday? Yes, there were. <laughs> Which ones? Memorable. Okay, um, some Bon Rosé. We didn't have any Grand Cru's, but uh, the restaurant's focusing on the wines of Louis saint jean or, or Côte de So, you know, we have some, some epic vineyards. That's fun. Yeah. I could go for some Pinot Noir right now after one more espresso martini. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, I haven't seen you for so long. I want to hear about all the things. What's going on with you? Oh my God, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. He goes on. <laughs> I mean, I got out of New York City for like seven weeks, which was amazing because I forgot that I lived in New York and outside of this 650 square feet I've been encaged in for so long. So yeah, my drinking is at a level, which I didn't think was possible. <laughs> um, I didn't so think that was possible either. 
I know. Thanks a lot. That's so amazing. <laughs> You're not gonna, I mean, I have so many friends who lived in Manhattan who now have like decamped for other places for who knows how long. Yeah. So, yeah. It's weird. Out. It's weird. But it's still, it's still New York. It's still fabulous. What are you gonna do? Yeah. So Mark and Dustin, Mark Chi, the man bun, he's either below you. Well, he's below you on my screen, but it's different everywhere. They're also, they're on Wall Street. So they've been weathering the whole thing <laughs> in Manhattan. Love it. Oh, so not Love it. I love the New York contingent. I like the, we're hardcore. We're going to stay. That's right. <laughs> so amazing. Very cool. <laughs> I saw Mark Hawkins for a minute. Did you see Mark, uh, Jeff Wigglepole in? I did. Oh. I did. Yeah, but he's been to... the microphone off. No, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hi. What do you uh, have? A libation or a fun Sunday beverage in your hand yet? I don't, because I was thinking of going to the gym, so. <laughs> oh. <Ew>. oh. <laughs> Yeah, he said proper you know he's gonna go. Just think. <laughs> yeah. Do a workout and shake a martini. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for your biceps, right? Or wait, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's core bicep. There's a lot of engagement there. <laughs> there was a bar in Chicago named the Gym. No? Was there? New York. It's in New York. Oh. oh, in New York. Great. I mean, there should be that bar in every city, probably. That's right. <laughs> Be our right. video is like calisthenic uh, cocktail making. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, remember the shake weight? Yeah. Oh. Shake weight. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> That's so <laughs> true, Carrie. Get a place where they put vodka inside. That's what they should have done. <laughs>